Welcome back, everybody, to the Fantasy Hockey Hacks podcast, a proud member of the Heavy Hockey Network. I'm Devin Davidson, your host. With me, as always, Bruce Gunther. Hello. Joining us on time, of course, Tyler Holman. Hey, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a long story. We'll get into that later. But, buddy, you sound great. Happy you're on. Happy you got your, your firmware updates dealt with. Uh, we got a special episode tonight, episode 114. We're going to cover off top 10 bounce back candidates featuring a special guest, Blake Creamer from Fan- or from Apples and Chino's Fantasy Hockey and the Cream of the Crop podcast. Blake, welcome. Good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> we got the thumbs up there. Um, All righty. So... Before we get into it too, too far, uh, I want to just mention that this episode is brought to you by Flaviar. Refine your palate with spirits from around the world. Sample and train your palate with curated tasting sets. Buy bottles at a discount and curate your home bar. Socialize and learn together with other members. Visit flaviar.com slash FHH today to save 10% when you sign up for your subscription. Available to our listeners in the United States, United Kingdom, and European Union. And of course, uh, Blake, you may or may not know, but we like to do a little thing on this show called John's List. Uh, it's basically just John's shit list of players past and present, as well as interesting and current topics from around the hockey world. And since John isn't here tonight, uh, he's getting put on the list again for failing to show up <laughs> and for fa- failing to list. fill in the notes. That's amazing. He's on yeah, his own list. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're going to keep that one short tonight, but I'm excited to get back into uh, our top 10 bounce back candidates here for 2023-2024. Uh, really interested to hear your thoughts on each of these players and where you think they're headed for next season. Uh, what we're going to do here, basically, is look at players that, whether it was purely performance-based, circumstantial, or injury-related, uh, they did not live up to expectations last season. And where do we expect to see them next year? Um, can managers take advantage of potentially depressed ADPs on these guys? Um, what kind of projections are we looking at? And uh, we'll have some fun doing it. So... You guys ready? Let's go. All righty. Ready to uh, roll. Let's... Beautiful. Let's kick it off with Brian Rust of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, Blake, I know you have maybe some difference of opinion here, but uh, I think just based on what happened last year and what we've seen from Brian Rust in the past, I, I feel like we should see some positive regression from this guy. Um there was a couple things that I, I wanted to mention first and possibly most important. He did see a decline in even strength and power play minutes last year. Do you think that's going to be the case moving forward or was that just a potential one-off from last season? Um, honestly, for me, Rust, it, like it, his big regression came just from lack of power play time, right? Um, his yeah. advanced metrics, the metrics that I like to look at, basically shots on goal per 60, individual courtesy four per 60, and individual scoring chances four per 60. That's at even strength. They're actually somewhat encouraging at even strength. He had the second highest shots on goal per 60 of his career at 9.43. Which is which is pretty damn good, right? He's approaching a threshold uh, that I like to look at. Yeah, of uh, 10 shots on goal per 60, which is good. That's basically you know, when players start becoming elite shot generators, right? So that's a number I got from Nate at Apples and Geno's. Shout out to him. And it just works, right? And, uh, you know, I mentioned his individual scoring chances for and his individual course, four for 60, highest of his career last season at even strength, all right? So those are all great signs and indicators to me that he's just not putting the puck in the net at a rate that matched those stats. That That's just bad luck, right? So... You would think more scoring chances would equal a better shooting percentage for Rust, but it just didn't happen, right? And he also played, yep. you know, most of his time in the top six there in Pittsburgh, right? With either Crosby or Malkin, big Gino, all right? It just, so it wasn't his deployment at even strength either. So basically it, his shooting percentage was 8.24, right? Which I think could definitely improve next season, um, giving him more goals. But I think if he doesn't get back to that top power play deployment, we're only going to see a minor bounce back with this guy. That's my opinion. And this is a player that needs that to bolster his output, right? And I think that Pittsburgh likes Ricky Rax, Ricard Raquel. They like him on the top power play instead of Rust. So to me, unless there's an injury, I just don't think that's going to happen. And I think that's going to cap Rust's ceiling big time, right? So to me, I value him as kind of a 45 to 55 point player max, that's sort of where I'm at with him. I like his even strength numbers. So, you know, that's where the bounce back is going to happen. But I mean, he's not a young man really in this game. And, and I just. 
And we just lost our buddy Blake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, of course, we uh, this this show, boys, has fallen off the rails awfully quick. <laughs> Uh, this is this is one for the the blooper reels for sure. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, Blake back here. Blake, you're back, buddy. Is. <laughs> is I'm it, back. Is your... I'm ready to go. I took a little break, but I feel good. You know, I was I'm rested now, and uh, yeah, it feels good. Did you get Did you get your mic flipped around or? <laughs> yeah, no, you know the problem was is my mic was backwards. I was talking into the butt end of this thing. It's insane, dude. All right, these dude, things are crazy. It happens. It happens. Okay. Believe me. Oh man! All right. Um, where did you know I what? where did I cut out? Because I was giving you I was giving you gold there. I don't know what's going. You on. were giving us gold. Just start uh, over. Just start over. No, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, because I'm not going to edit this thing that far back. Um, I think we we're talking about even strength scoring, and that was kind of where you expected to see the regression for him. Um, one thing I did note too is that his his uh, power plate shooting percentage was eight percent last year, and that was by far the lowest over the past five seasons. So even if he doesn't get power play one, and and you may be right, right? If they stick with uh, Raquel on the top power play unit, I still think even on power play two, we should see some positive regression for Brian Rust. So um, we'll see how far that regression goes and we'll see how far that bounce back goes. I'm expecting a better season from Brian Rust. I just, I, the guy's been too good in recent seasons to just fall off a complete cliff the way he did. Uh, the other guy I wanted to talk about here, Blake, was Tristan Jari. So obviously... Not a not a good end to the season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He finished his final 15 games of the year with a 5-6-2 record, a 3-21 goals against average, and an 8-91 save percentage. Um, his 9-15 save percentage was his lowest since 2018-2019. So do you see some improvement in Jari's numbers next year? I think so. I mean, you know, and they've, they've shown some confidence in this guy by, you know, locking him up. Right. He's got a five year contract, reasonable, um, you know, number there, five point three seven five million dollars. So I think they're going to run it back. I mean, Pittsburgh barely missed the playoffs. And I think there, there's some reasons why I, I do like Jari. He did have a bad season and I think he's he's going to bounce back for sure. That's sort of my thoughts on him. OK, beautiful. All right. Number two on this list, we're going to go to Jonathan Huberto. I mean, we've talked to this lots in the show, guys. I. I right away felt like he was going to regress from the 115 points he put up um, in his last year in Florida, um, and and it didn't go well in in Calgary. But I don't. Did anyone, Bruce? I mean, you you did the the right up here on on Huberto. Uh, did you see it going as as bad as 55 points in 79 games for this guy? No, and I drafted him last year in one league, thinking that yeah, he's not going to get 115, but I figure he'd get right around 75. 80 points or so, and no, oh, it went right into the toilet. But yeah, I did, didn't expect it to go that low. So, Blake, I know you you weren't really a Sutter fan, is that right? Or am I thinking of uh, there's another? Coach <laughs> no, you're, you're like, right? absolutely right. Sutter, yeah, he's a ding dong. All right, he's a dingus. <laughs> he's a dinosaur, and honestly, I, I'm happy that I'm not happy the man was fired. I'm sure he's a good person, but. You know, th- this this guy made no sense for this team. And, you know, I've got I, I want to hear your guys take on Huberto before I get into business here, because I'm about to rip this man. But, you know, yeah, <laughs> like this, this is not a good uh, situation with Sutter. So let, but I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about Huberto first. Yeah, I, I for sure think he's going to see a bit of a bounce back here. Um, I mean, he, he saw a, a drop in power play share, um, drop in ice time, like every, everything under Sutter just was not a good fit. Uh, I do have concerns about the team. I mean, was, that, that team is in complete disarray right now, right? They, they traded to Foley. Um, it, we don't know what's going to go on with Lindholm and with Backlund. Like I, I'm really curious to see what they do there because if you wait until the trade deadline, you're putting yourself in a tough spot, right? You, you risk losing those assets for nothing. And if you do, I mean, where does that leave Huberto next year? Right? So just the, the talent situation in, in Calgary is a real concern for me. Um, that said, I, I think there are some some signs that point towards maybe some regression for next year, and I could see him bouncing back. I've got seventy three points and twenty two goals here, but is that is that too generous for Huberto and Calgary next year, guys? I don't think. Yeah, it could be. Well, it all depends on what happens, right? So if Lindholm disappears, Backlund disappears before the season starts, he could be pretty tough sledding to get to that point. But if they stick around, he could get there, but. If uh yeah, if they 
start selling off the team, it could be pretty tough for him to get back there. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of banking that based on on those guys sticking around until at least the trade deadline, but who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, obviously this man's season was a debacle, right? Like he, it, it's just 115 points to 55 points. That's that's momentous. That's insane, right? Um, and I, honestly, I just think like, Every this man was not put in a in a in a situation to succeed. That was clear, right? Um, he, he's a guy that that you know is a monster on the power play, one of the best, most elite passers in the league. He's not getting power play one. What the absolute hell? That's frick. That's borderline negligence right there. <laughs> I mean, get this man on the power play one. That there's no question there. Um, you know, so that that's a huge issue there. Um, he had the lowest or, you know, right at the bottom of his entire career on all those metrics that I like shots on goal per 60, Corsi four per 60, individual scoring chances, four per 60. He's in the toilet. Right. Um, and his confidence was shaken. There was rumors. He was maybe, you know, playing with an injury at some point and he clearly had an issue with Sutter. So, uh, you know, I actually have him, this, this is a guy who you're going to get at major value next season because of this trash season this active dumpster fire that he produced uh you know so i actually i do i'm doing projections myself i don't know if you, you guys uh do that as well but i've got him projected for 87 points next season back on power play one rolling again i think you know he's not 115 point huberto but this right here is the absolute basement for huberto i think you can get him at value next season like where does he go fourth round fifth round sixth round huberto Yes, please. I think that's going to be nice because he also bangs. He bangs the hell out of people. So we, we just need to see him back on power play one seventy one. I like it. Happen with the new coach. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's move on to another Calgary flame here. Jacob Markstrom. I've got him projected for 55 games next year. And I think Bruce, you'd agree mostly based on his salary, not based on his play from last season. 2022-2023 um, was a rough year. 59 games, 23 wins, 21 losses, 12 overtime losses. We talked about this at length last year. We hate the the Batman loser point because that really skewed some of the standings, uh, Calgary yeah. being one of them, right? They shouldn't have even been close to the, the playoff race last year. Nope. Uh, what did he have? Goals against average of 292, save percentage of 892. That is well off his three-year averages of 2.59 and 0. Uh, 0. 0.907, uh, respectively. And then, Bruce, goals saved above expected, minus 17.97. Ouch. <laughs> it doesn't get much worse than that. So uh, he oh. looked uncomfortable. We all like to joke. Uh, Blake, we're, we're Oilers fans on this podcast, and we like to joke about uh, the fact that Connor McDavid broke the Calgary Flames in the playoffs. Franchise ended. He, he just trashed them. Yeah, there you go. That's not yeah. nice. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the thing about Calgary, though, Markstrom has to be sweating a little bit. So Dan Vladar is signed for the next two seasons. However, they got Dustin Wolf waiting in the wings, and that guy mm -hmm. has done absolutely nothing but win his entire career. We talked about yeah. him uh, previously here on, this, on the show. I mean, what does Markstrom have left on his contract? You guys know? Is it three, three more seasons? Four? Yeah. Four more years at six million bucks a year. That is gross. So things yeah, better change that's quickly. Yucky. Yeah, that is very yucky. Um, but things can't get any worse. So I, I we're predicting a bounce back. He's going to be the starter. You got it. You give him four years of six million bucks. He's going to be the starter next year. It's just the way it is. Any other thoughts, gentlemen? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely <laughs> agree. I mean, there's no, there's no choice but for him to bounce back right i think the question is how much does he does he bounce back right um some interesting stats on calgary actually um as i was digging into markstrom a little bit here something when i when i look at valuing goalies i like to see what's the team environment like how are they you know are how are they defensively what what are they doing you know statistically and calgary actually had you know some some interesting statistics so check this out they were um second overall in the entire league in Corsi against per 60. So behind Carolina, which is an elite defensive team, Calgary right after Carolina. So they're limiting pucks towards the net at second overall in the league. That's pretty darn good. That's a nice place to be for a goalie, really right? Um, yeah. They were third overall in shots against per 60, right? So they're, they're, they're limiting actual shots against, and they were sixth overall in the league in scoring chances against per 60. So sixth best. 
Um, so that, to me, sounds like an excellent place to be for a goalie, unless your name is Jacob Markstrom. Because what the <laughs> hell happened to this man? Oh, my God. Um, you know, contrast that by the fact that they had the ninth worst save percentage in the entire league. That makes no sense, right? You, go, you have to look at Markstrom at that point and be like, he was bad. Like, it wasn't the team. He was just bad, right? He had 14 games with a worse than, uh, you know, 85 save percentage. That's ridiculous. You mentioned his goals saved uh, above average. That was heinous. I, I just yep. think I, this, to me, something must have been going on mentally with Markstrom or physically an injury. And I think, again, the Sutter factor, like, we don't know what the culture was like in that room. But, I mean, this isn't the same goalie we saw in seasons previous. So, he's an obvious bounce back candidate. Makes total sense after that season. And he's also going to plummet down draft boards, right? Um, but to me, yeah. the fact that this guy can actually have these extremes in his game, like, you know, Vesna, Vesna candidate, worst goalie in the league. Like what can you, that's, <laughs> that doesn't sound good to me. Right. So, um, I'm going to be dodging this man, you know, in every spot available, unless he falls to me well after round 10 and, and he might, I don't know, he's worth the flyer, but I do think he's going to get the, the first shot there, but I think the leash is going to be pretty short. I think a lot of people are going to overlook Markstrom for next season, just based on the Calgary situation in general. Uh, Tyler, you got Markstrom pretty late, I think the year previously, didn't you, when he was actually good? Yeah, I think I got him. It's got to be like, it was seventh round and below. Yeah. I was doing the old zero G until I decided I couldn't anymore. <laughs> <talk> <laughs> I well, it actually, it actually worked out for me. Yeah. Uh, but you you were right yeah. there with Markstrom, so yeah. that's interesting. I I think I've and I've heard that quite a bit now, Blake. Just trying to fade goaltenders. You gotta do the old zero round. G, all right? Book it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I had to bring it up. That's why I had to bring it up. Hundred percent. Okay, let's move on to number four on this list: Zach Werenski, Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, I think no surprise here. We all see him as a top pair power play one defenseman. I've got him here for 54 points and 15 goals. I think he'll probably see, I, I agree with you, like around 23 minutes a game next year. Um, I think his three-year average was closer to 25 minutes a game. So uh, I think he's, he'll be closer to his career average. <laughs> Again, we're having some technical difficulties here with Blake. Wah, wah, wah. I'm going to continue on with Zach Wierenski here, guys. Um, I just, yeah, he's going to have a bounce back here. I think he's going to play closer to that 23 minutes a game. He's got an improved cast around him. He should see some easier minutes, I I think, as Provorov and, and Severson maybe shelter, uh, shoulder some of the load at five on five and take some of that PK time off his hands. I think that coming back from a major injury, uh, they're going to want to ease him into duty. Like, I, I don't see him getting 25 or 27 minutes a game, at least not to start. Um, he doesn't have to anymore, right? He doesn't have to play all those heavy minutes now. And and if they have a shot at the playoffs, um, they're going to want this guy to uh, to be fresh when he plays there. So I think he's still going to have a good year, uh, 54 points, 15 goals, like I said, um, but I'm just not sure what we'll see in terms of deployment. So time will tell. Uh, and Blake okay. is back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him back in here again, Bruce, and then I want to hear what you got to say there. Okay. Blake, hi. And he's back. Boys, I don't know. There must be a thunderstorm <laughs> out here or something. I don't know what the hell's going on. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm enjoying listening to you guys, so carry on. Okay, so no worries. <laughs> we we just jumped back to uh, to talk about Zach Wierenski here again. Bruce, you had some thoughts. Go for it. Oh, well, as we were talking, we were, while we were waiting for Tyler's firmware update about where uh, Blake was saying where Wierenski was going to pop was on the power play this year. So if he can stay healthy, Gaudreau, Lion, they can stay healthy. They can have a pretty potent power play there, and you can pick up some good points there this season yeah it's it's strange i think columbus is going to be a popular fantasy destination this year right with with goudreau and line a and and Wierenski and um yep. fantilli and and i actually well there's even some other depth options there but i think one guy who's going to be a beneficiary of all this is uh elvis merzlikens I, th I think that's a nice zero g option later in drafts blake what do you think yeah, absolutely. Elvis is in the building. He was very stinky last year. So, but I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I was saying to you guys offline, you, you you can't even look at anything that Columbus did last season. You, you have to throw the season away because of the man games lost there in Columbus. Like it, it's just impossible to predict what could happen. And I think Merz Lickens has shown, you know, that he, he can be a number one goalie and, 
you know, this is going to be his year to prove that though, because no one's really coming for his minutes. Right. Um, So I think he's going to get, he's going to get the keys there. But as far as Wierenski goes, I think, you know, last season I was stoked on Columbus um, for fantasy and it just, you know, they shit the bed. So it, I think this season here is going to be like last season. I'm excited about them again. Hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens, but Wierenski in particular, this guy, um, I'm, is a player I'm very excited about. And be, because of this bounce back potential, right, that you're mentioning, he's going to, um, you know, people forget about Zach Wierenski, but but he's he's an elite offensive defenseman, in my opinion. This guy had 48 points in 68 games for a 58-point pace in 2021. It's very good, but what, what Wierenski does better than a lot of defensemen is he shoots. He, his shots on goal per game for defenseman, 3.2. That's excellent. That's very good. Mm-hmm. And the truth is he's never popped on the power play. His career high on the power play is 15 power play points. I think that this can be uh, a 25 power play point guy right off the bat. And I think that his even strength numbers are going to regress upwards. Like if you look at um, his season, the, the last kind of full season, he had 68 games in 2021. Um, his shooting percentage um, at even strength was only 3.87. That's really low for him. He's usually six. He's in between six and nine. That's where he's usually been in his career. And in that season, it was only um, 3.87. So that's going to regress upwards, in my opinion. So he's going to get more points, more goals on at even strength. And it's just a better cast of characters, right? That was a season where he was playing with, you know, a bunch of ding-dongs out there, right? Now he's got Goudreau, who's an elite um, playmaker. Patrick Laine, come on, buddy. Stay healthy. What are you doing? And Big Boone Jenner. Oh, man, that fantasy legend. I love that, man. <laughs> um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, funny story. My wife actually bought me uh, on Etsy. She bought me a Boone Jenner t-shirt. Like, it's just a big, you remember those, those t-shirts from like value village that have like a big thing right on it, like a wolf howling at the moon or something like that. That's what this shirt (laughs) looks like, but it's Boone Jenner. All right. That's That's where I'm at with Boone Jenner. That's, that's my level of fantasy. You know, I, I, I don't have a lot of friends. I have some, you know, this is, this is what I do, but that's, you know, (laughs) anyways, I don't know where I'm going off, but yeah, Zach Wierenski, he's going to have a great season. I think it's a, it, it, honestly, I think he's going to be a 65 point, 60, 65 point defenseman book it. Okay, I like it. Like that enthusiasm. And the win goes to your wife for the Boone Jenner t-shirt. Yeah, it's nice. She got it on Etsy. So, you know, nice. that's, that's well nice. Well done. All right, let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit Oilers here. We're going to go with Jack Campbell at number five. Uh, I, I still think it's going to be a tandem next year at 50%, uh, you know, s- somewhere in that range. I think they, they really like what Stuart Skinner did. Obviously, they leaned on him heavily uh, in the playoffs. But Jack Campbell actually when called upon in the playoffs, was was quite good. In four appearances, he's credited with one win while sporting a 1.01 goals against average and a 961 save percentage uh, on 51 shots against. So he kind of redeemed himself a little bit. Um, he did have a 21-9 record, but his save percentage was awful. 888, a goals against average of 341. Uh, lots and lots of room for improvement there for Jack Campbell. But... Um, I mean, Blake, what do you think? Do you, do you see this guy? I mean, it, the, the tough thing here is that Edmonton's defense didn't get any better this offseason. Um, and, and really, up front, they didn't get much better either, just adding Connor Brown. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be – I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Connor Brown. But, I mean, that's that's one one addition here, really. And, and defensively, the team didn't get much stronger. So what, what do you expect to see from Jack Campbell next year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. I, I don't know where I sit with this guy, but I like your take that it's it's probably going to be a 50-50. I believe that Jack Campbell's going to be the 1A. That's that's my opinion, but I mean, just barely, right? Um, you know, he totally redeemed himself in the playoffs. Not really, but, you know, he, <laughs> he played better, right? That's all we want to see, but he's getting paid to be a starter, and obviously he dropped the ball last season. Skinner took full advantage, and he's waiting in the wings, right? This guy looks good. Um, that said, I don't think Edmonton is ready, you know, in these prime years with McDavid and dry and Nuge to just give the, the keys to the team to, to, you know, a sophomore player, right. Who's, who's really hasn't proven anything. Right. And kind of faulted in the playoffs. Right. So I, I, I think Campbell will be the guy, the one a again, but, uh, kind of like Markstrom leash is going to be short, I think. Uh, but the thing with Campbell, he really seems to be boom or bust to me. And I don't like that. Um, goalies to me, we obviously know they're voodoo. It's, it's, they're hard to predict. Um, but when you got guys like Markstrom with these crazy extremes and Jack Campbell, really like he's got extremes too. There's just not a lot of consistency there from start to start. And I think that's wearing thin in Edmonton. And I feel like 
you know, um, Jack Campbell might be feeling a little bit of the pressure of the situation there in Edmonton. First off, Canadian market. And second off, like, we need to get Connor McDavid to the Stanley Cup finals. Like, yeah. And, and now, like, he's clearly the best player in the league. There's no question. He's never been to the Stanley Cup finals. He never even played a game. So, you know, <laughs> I think they're feeling the pressure there. And I think Jack Campbell's wearing that. And, you know, I don't know if Skinner's the answer. So I, I do like him for a bounce back, though. I think, you know, let, let's, let's give him another chance and see what happens here. Yep, I'm with you. All right. Anything else, Bruce, Tyler? No, I think he summed it up nicely. Okay. Just want to know if Tyler want to give you more love for Jack Campbell. Just express your love, Tyler. <laughs> First round draft next year for Tyler. <laughs> sucks. What's the, <laughs> what's, the fe- what's the feeling out there with Campbell? Because you guys are having to boys. Like, what's, you know, sort of. So, what, like, how do you, what do you, like, it's the goaltending, obviously, in Edmonton that's, that seems to be the problem or the, or the weak link. What's the answer there? I, I think he's going to be better because he really can't be any worse. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's what we have to look forward to. I think Skinner <laughs> faltered in the playoffs because he played too much. Mm-hmm. And it was frustrating for me to watch. Um, when Campbell came in, I know that first game that he came in, he did his job because he was the backup. Um, I think the second time he came in, they probably should have started him after that um, and kind of ran with, for lack of a better term, the magic that he was playing with, which was average goaltending and actually making a save. Um, I think that was a mistake on Jay Woodcroft's part, not actually getting that out of him in the playoffs because it looked like he was about to kind of give that to you after not doing it all season. I think he's going to be better next year, but I still think that in February, March, we're all going to be talking about the same thing when he's going to go on another one of his runs that he's historically gone on um, where he lets in Mike Smith type goals and (laughs) you go right back to Skinner. I think they're in a good spot though with Skinner because I think Skinner coming in as a backup is, is in a good spot because he's solid. You have two opposites. You have, you have Campbell who's all over the place and you have Skinner who's just solid positional and quiet. Um, I think it's a good spot to be in. I think he's going to be better because he has to be because last year was horrendous. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think just one more year in Edmonton, he's just going to be more adjusted to the system, to the players, the coaches, the, the city. Like, I, I still think all of that comes into play, right? When you when you move to a new market, it takes time to adjust. Um, and like you said, he can't be any worse. I, I do have concerns for Edmonton, though, next year. Like, I really don't think they did enough. And, and I know they're, they're tight against the cap, but... Uh, I, I don't know. And, and Jay Fresh jinxed us. He he projected the Oilers to win the President's Trophy next year. Uh, so now we just know we're not going to win the Stanley Cup because no team <laughs> ever wins the, the President's yeah. Trophy wins the Stanley Cup. Yeah. So That's just science right there. So that's, that's just fun. science. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Alex Dabrinkit, uh for the Detroit Red Wings. So for me, guys, there's lots here, and, and I, I won't go through all of this, but if you want to read it on the, on the blog, on the, on the website, Go into a lot more detail on the uh, advanced analytics, but there's a few things. Uh, so 66 points and 27 goals. I mean, that's a pretty good stat line for most players, but definitely a step back for Dabrinkit. Um, 78 points and 41 goals he posted in 2021, 2022, and he was on an 88 point, 50 goal pace in 2020, 2021. So looking at some of those regression metrics that we like to look at, uh, secondary assists per 60 was at 0.21, his Tevish Bruce at 6.7%. His individual shooting percentage at 10.3%, and his power play uh, shot percentage was at 137 All of those were significantly down from where you would expect to see DeBrinket, um based on his, his career and three-year averages. So uh, I, I think the other thing, too, is in Detroit, he's kind of just going to be the guy. Like in Ottawa, I think they had more personnel. He wasn't necessarily the guy. His, his ice time did go down. Um, I think he saw... Uh, decrease in in both time or even strength time on ice and power play time on ice. So he'll get more opportunity in Detroit. Uh, He's probably going to play next to Lucas Raymond and Dylan Larkin on that top line. That's my expectation. And with that in mind, I've got him here for 78 points and 42 goals. Blake, what do you think? Yeah, I love it. It's probably bang on. 
I think, yeah, 40 goals. I love that for to bring it, you know, it, it just all depends on some of the other uh, analytics. Right. And it's hard to value a player when he goes to a new team. Right. Like I, I agree with you. I think he's going to get that first line deployment with Larkin, but what does that deployment look like? Is it back to the Chicago days where he got 20 minutes and 51 seconds average time on ice? Or, you know, is it, is it closer to 19 minutes that he got in Ottawa last season? Right. Um, Cause it makes a difference. This guy, you know, he needs to be out there on the ice and, you know, in his most successful seasons or his most successful season there with Chicago. Yeah. 20 minutes uh, average time on ice. So um, something that I saw in Ottawa too, that was, that was really just, you know, stood out to me was his on ice shooting percentage, uh, 6.8%. Uh, that that's putrid. That's stinky. Um, yep. you know, cause on ice shooting percentage is usually like in between nine and 11%, especially for an offensive team. Um, you know, and the Ottawa senators were an offensive team and this guy was playing with Drake Batherson and the Pinto being Shane Pinto. So, I mean, it should have been better than this. Right. Um, so, but it's even strength for sure. Alex to it needs to regress positively because he's a power play beast. There's no question there. Um, and he's going to get that power play time in Detroit too, but I don't know. I'm just, it's, I'm always cautious when a player goes to a new team and that's going to be the case with Alex to I actually held him in a keeper league last season. It was like a keep four and I held the Brinkett and yeah, he put up this season, which isn't terrible, but I don't know if I'm going to keep him again. I, I just, I don't know. I, I got to, you know, I got to noodle on that a little bit. Um, but I do think if not this season with Detroit, I think he will be fine. I think this is a great fantasy player and he's going to be up around 40 goals again, you know, very soon. I, I don't know if it's going to be next year. I, I, I think it might be though. Yeah. Just going back to the power play, I think his shooting percentage, like I said, at 13.7, uh, he's typically been closer to that 20 to 25% mm. on the power yeah. play. So that's that right there is a big difference. Uh, I think that would actually account for another seven power play goals. If he was at 22 and a half percent of the power play, yeah, um, so something to keep in mind there. Um, the other thing too, is his, his individual shooting percentage at 10.3, he's closer to 15% most seasons. So I, I just, I think there's lots going on here with this player yeah. uh, under the hood. I expect a big bounce back. So yeah, we'll see what it. happens. All right, Bruce, any, uh, any difference of opinion there? No, like I said, he said it's going to depend a lot on his his deployment and power play. There you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll find out more about that in the preseason. Okay, Bruce, let's go on to number seven here. John Carlson of the Washington Capitals. He's going to go right back to where he belongs. Top uh, top pair, power play one, and seventy one points and seventeen goals for next year. Bruce, dig into it for me, buddy, because I know you are all about John Carlson as a bounce back candidate. Oh, definitely. And he, well, very unlucky, right? So his season last year, he took a puck to the side of the head. Like, holy crap. Like his, that, his uh, ear fell off. Like it was yeah, crazy like, stuff. Crazy injury. It's, it's, yeah. It's ridiculous. Right. So come back at the end of the season and it, it's, they eased, eased him in a little bit, but it pretty much just jumped right back in where he, where he left off. And he's just going to pick that up again this season and just roll with it. He he did play at a 59.18 goal pace over 82 games. So, I mean, he, he's going to look good getting back into it. Uh, I, I did add a couple notes here for you, Bruce. I think it's worth noting that his secondary assist rate at 0.27 uh, per 60, that was the third lowest of his 14-year NHL career uh, and his lowest since 2013-2014. So even a modest increase to 0.4 secondary assist per 60, that's just that's six points right there. So I think like Definitely. some of that, and it is a bit random, right? But I'm just based on the numbers that we've looked at for his career, right there, six points, bang, done. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is his on-ice shooting percentage, Blake. So at 8.1, uh, that was his lowest mark since 2014, 2015. And I don't have his other numbers in there, but uh, I expect a big bounce back there too. So I think he will be in good shape next season. Yeah, absolutely. Do you guys have any kind of reservations about... Rasmus Sandin maybe pulling a, you know, Victor Hedman, Mikhail Sergachev type situation from Tampa Bay. Like, and I'm just putting this out there because I don't think that that's going to happen. But I mean, the fact that it happened to Hedman last season uh, and Carlson's coming off this crazy injury. And, you know, I mean, he's 33. He's not, he's not crazy. He's not old man withers, but, you know, he's, he's getting up there. Um, and you got Sandin in the wings that this, this man proved that he can run that power play. No problem. Um, I don't know. Do, do you have any reservations at all with Carlson getting that that seventy one percent power play share that he had last season, or seventy six percent? Oh my god! 
Yeah, I, for me, like I'm I'm Team Carlson here 100 percent until further notice. I think that's just it's his spot to lose, and I, I agree with you. Sandine was fantastic last year when Carlson was out of the picture, uh, and, and even before he got traded to Washington, looked really good, right? So. I, I I don't know. He's a guy I'm probably putting on my watch list. And if there's an injury to Carlson or or if something else happens, whatever, it's just that's a guy that could that could pop off. But um, I'm not going to draft with that in mind. I guess. What do you think Carlson gets next year, points wise? Yeah, I got 71 points here and 17 goals. Oh man, that would be beautiful. If he's getting that, that means Ovi's getting a bunch of goals too. So, which I which I'm rooting for. I want to see this man get this done sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, definitely. I mean, Carlson had a great season, no question. He he is all those metrics that I like. Um, yeah, he was career best just in his in 40 games there. So he still got juice uh, juice there. You know, gas in the tank. I think he's good to go. 71 points. Yeah, I think 60 to 70 points. I, I, I like Carlson for that as well. All right. The other guy we had here, just as an honorable mention, was Evgeny Kuznetsov. So on a points-per-game basis, last season was his worst offensive uh, output since 2014-2015, just .68 points per game, uh, 55 total points and 12 goals. So again, looking at our, our regression metrics, um, we should see some positive regression in all five of those. So secondary assist per 60 was low, his individual shooting percentage, uh, on a shooting percentage, and just 10.2% on the power play. Um it's of note that his individual shooting percentage at 7% was a career worst. Um, and then pair that with his power play shooting percentage was the second lowest of his career. So just a couple of things there that I think could change in his favor for next season. Um, and then he, we saw a decline in ice time too. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I'd watched that early in the season. Total time on ice went you know down two minutes basically. And his power play time on ice uh, or power play share went down from 73% to 57%. So, that's a big one. If some of that gets back to where we've expected to see Kuznetsov, um, you know, he could be in good shape. But what other option really do they have there for first line center and, and top power play? Yeah. Uh, Dylan, I mean, Dylan Strom. Oh, there you go. I was just going to say Dylan Strom. I, I, it's an option, Yikes. I guess. It's an option. <laughs> I think if, I think if Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov is a little less uh, sidetracked with his off ice activities. Next year, um, <laughs> a lot of these metrics should be better. Nose candy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you said it. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, we were all thinking it. He just said it. <laughs> no, I'm literally talking about nose candy. Just, just candy uh, yeah. for your nose. For, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. Completely legal. Yeah, yeah. 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 New thing. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to another player that I'm big on for next year. I probably shouldn't say that in front of Bruce and Tyler, but here I am. Uh, Evander Kane of the Edmonton Oilers. I've got him pegged for a top six power play two role. And Blake, I'm projecting 70 points and 35 goals. Uh, His second season was a tough one. He posted 56 points and 35 goals in 58 games from January to June in 2022, including 13 goals leading the playoffs. Uh, but then he's limited to just 28 points and 16 goals in 41 games this past season. So uh, major wrist injury, obviously, in November was it was a big scare for him. Um, he had other things going on personally, bankruptcy, creditor issues, and he had a child on the way. So I think just looking at everything holistically, I, I, there was so much going on with Evander Kane. I think a lot of that's behind him now. He seems to be settled in Edmonton. Um, it's of note that he, he actually shot 0% on the power play last year. That's he only bad. had 10 shots on goal, but yeah, 0% on the power play. Not great. Uh, on a shooting percentage at 7.7%. And like you had said on a, on a good offensive team, you expect that number to be at least a couple points higher. Um, so that's, that's something to keep an eye on. And then his, his shot volume is elite at almost 11 and a half shots on goal per 60. So this guy, he was almost top 20 league wide last year. Oh, I love Evander Kane. You got to take a gander. At Evander. All right. This man, I'm all over this guy this season. He's great. He's one of my favorite fantasy performers. He's a guy I usually target. And when he has a season like he just had, oh, man, I'm stoked. Like, you know, people are going to be trashing this man. They're, oh, he's done. He doesn't get any power play time. Like, who cares? I, I actually like, when I see a player that projects, like you're projecting for 70, I project him for 65. But, you know, with 35 goals, um, and, and those numbers that you're talking about here, and that's with like basically no power play time or, or anyone to play with on the power play. He's getting the scraps from the big boys. Like, 
that's that's excellent because that means his ceiling is could can be crazy high if he even gets a sniff on power play one. Like a sniff, you know what if Hyman gets injured, if any McDavid, Drysdale, yeah. Nuge, any of those guys, like Evander Kane's next up. You know, this guy's good to go. And he's getting, you know, prime deployment in the top six with these beauties as well. Plus, like category leagues, this man is Brady Kachuk light. He's a beefer. He's a beefcake. I uh, love this. 124 hits in 41 games. My God, buddy. He's got anger issues. All right. That's just, you know, what, what is he doing? Um, so, yeah, he, I'm just really big on Evander Kane. And when a guy like this underperforms the way he did, like, like all that stuff you said holds water. Like all the off ice issues and the wrist injury. Yeah. He's going to have a stinky season. So I think he's going to be stoked to get back in there. This guy's locked in, you know, uh, contract wise for the Oilers. They have every reason to play him and, and trot him out there. And I think he maybe gets a little power play time with the big boys. Like he's going to get more than two power play points next season. There's no question. I could see this guy getting 10, 10 power play sure. points. That's eight points. You know, that's, that's pretty good. But <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, I, I'm talking, talking about Evander Kane. I love this man. I think he's going to have a great season. Love it. And I just forgot to mention, he's probably one of a handful of players that, if healthy through 82 games, we can expect 300 shots, probably 250 hits, and 100 pims. So if you're in those multi-cat leagues, like you said, very, very valuable player. Like, how high are you taking him, Blake, in a multi-cats league? Uh, well, I mean, you know what? I'm going to be waiting a lot to, for Yahoo to re- release their ADPs and so I can sort of extract value here. But, I mean, I like just straight up Evander Kane, like fourth round, fifth round, like – that makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Like I usually try and wait as long as I can. I don't like reaching unless I have to. Um, But yeah, I think because of this performance, he's going to, he's going to fall a bit. Like in a category league, you're getting Evander Kane in like the fifth or sixth round. What the hell? Get, get this man on your roster ASAP. Devin's taking him in the first round. I already know it. No, it's first round. Happening. I already know it's it. Okay. Love I already it. know it. <laughs> Love it. I already know it. He's not no, wrong. No, All right. I don't no, think I'll, I don't think I'll go that high. But I, did you take him last year, Tyler? Someone in our league took him in the third or fourth round last year. Yeah, Zach did. Yeah, and I was pissed because I was going to try and snag him in the fourth, I think, and it, it, it was done. So it's a good yeah, pick. Too. I, I had him in my watch list. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right, we've given Evander Kane plenty of love. Let's move on to another player that Tyler absolutely loves, Matt Duchesne of the Dallas Stars. <laughs> uh, I, I've got him pegged for the top six, power play two, and 69 points and 25 Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, yeah, I ha- every time I hear 69, I have to say it's it's ridiculous. I'm a it's, child. I'm a freaking child. It's, That's it's us too, buddy. Us too. Yeah, on it's this required. show, it's required. Yeah. That's it's, fine. It, That's yeah. fine. Good. He's um, one of us. Good company. <laughs> For sure. So, like most of Nashville in 2022-2023, Duchesne came back down to earth after that outlier season in 2021-2022. Not a bad season for him, actually. 56 points and 22 goals in 71 games. Um, but obviously, his his value was was inflated in drafts just based on what had happened the year prior. And anyone that wasn't paying attention uh, drafted him with the expectation of, of 90 points and 45 goals. Um, so, something to keep in mind there for this upcoming season. Um, I, I don't know. I think that, uh, here's something I dug up for you guys. So Duchesne was actually more effective five on five than Tyler Sagan, Wyatt Johnson, and Evgeny Dadnoff. So I think in my mind, there's no reason that he can't play in the top six, especially ahead of guys like Dadnoff and, and maybe not Johnson. Johnson was really great. I mean, I don't know. I think there's room for him in the top six and he's not going to crap crack power play one, but if there's injuries, Similar to Evander Kane, he's going to get a shot on the top power play unit. So, what do you guys think? Uh, Tyler, you got something to say? You start. Yeah, you start. You Uh, go ahead, T-Boy. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to steal this from Blake. Get in there. Matt Matt Duchesne is going down the drain. Uh, (laughs) Was that good? Was that good or what? I liked it. I liked that one, yeah. I think the fit is weird. I don't think he's going to do anything. I think he's closer to that. 56 point season that he ever will be to his big breakout season that he had. I just think the fit's weird. I just like, I I think he's going to be okay, but that's, that's somebody that you're going to draft in the 10th round or lower to me. I just think, I just think the fit in the top six for him is just a weird place. I think he's there more because he likes to wear cowboy hats than because (laughs) he fits with that team. And that's, Kind of funny, but it also kind of fits because that's why I went to Nashville in the first place. He's big, I just big think, country music guy, yeah. Big country music guy. Oh. I just think it's weird. 
I just think the whole thing's weird. Well, you know what? This this sounds like Twitter poll material, so I'm going to put it out there to our listeners. Put it out there. Do you like Matt Duchesne in the top six or not? And we'll and see. And do you like his cowboy hats? Yes. Yeah. That's go. a no for me. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's <laughs> one one nothing. Um, yeah, I don't know. To me, Duchesne, it this it's not a player I'm excited about at all. I mean, I think he this is a player that needs the power play to pop. Right in his his best season ever last season with Nashville, twenty nine power play points or sorry two seasons ago uh, twenty nine power play points right um, and that was an eighty six point obviously we know he he went off he went nuclear that's fine the whole team did on the power play but um, I, I could see Duchesne in the top six but I don't think it's going to make a difference right I, I think that at even strength he's not a good shot generator um, he's not a good chance generator. So, and he's also playing with a Jamie Ben that's one year older, right? And Wyatt Johnson, who I, is a player I'm actually a little bit excited about next season, or just something I'm someone I'm looking forward to watch you play. But yeah. I, I think uh, I agree with you, Tyler. I think 56 points. I, I think this is a guy on the downside of his career, and he's probably going like first off his ice time too. I think is going to go down. He played 18 minutes and 19 seconds last season. I think that goes down to 16. Right, probably something like 16. You know, he's going to be middle six forward with power play two. And, you know, he's going to be a good supplementary piece. And then, like you said, Devin, if there's injuries, this guy's going on the top power play. I think that's that's why they brought him in here. He's a good piece for that, right? It's it's a good hockey yep. trade to get Duchesne in there. This guy's a, he can do stuff, right? He's, you know, he's obviously an offensive-minded player, but I just don't think he's going to get the opportunity to do that. And they have guys on Dallas that do it better than him, in my opinion. It, you know, taking into account what you said as well, Devin, about the efficiency there. But, um, yeah, I think he needs the power play, and I don't think he's going to get it. That that is for sure an important point, and and I guess for me too, the other thing to note is I, I'm not reaching for Duchesne. I like the player, but you're right, Tyler. If I can get him in the tenth round or later, if I can find value on Duchesne, he's still a player I'm interested in because I think he's going to have a good season playing with guys like Wyatt Johnson. I don't think Jamie Ben's going to have a big year next year. I don't expect that. I think it was kind of it seemed odd that he bounced back so much this year, but yeah, big season. Who knows? Yeah. All right, and then Blake, you're going to like this one. Final bounce back candidate. Thatcher Demko, the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, probably no surprise. I've got him pegged here for 67% net share, 55 games. Really, it was a tale of two seasons for this guy. Um, one win in his first 11 games. Posted an awful 4.02 goals against average and an 8.74 save percentage. Uh, injuries limited him to just 32 games on the season. What, what else you got to say about this guy, Blake? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, right off the bat, tale of two seasons, right? Um, I think he came into the season a little bit injured, right? And then w- the wheels fell off, right? Like first 15 games, three, 10, and two. Dear God. And try watching that as a fan. No. No. Oh, man. It was freaking painful. Actually, just from watching the games, Canucks had leads in like four straight games that they blew, you know, and it was just, it was just awful. It was worst case scenario for Demko. Um, you know, and then he got injured and then he was out for a long time. So I agree with you though. He's, he's for sure the number one there. There's no one like Spencer Martin, get the hell out of my sight. No, that man had the worst <laughs> goal save against or, or above average in the entire league, Spencer Martin. So thank you for your service. Uh, go sit on the bench and fill up the water bottles. All right. This, um, you know, Demko, he's going to be better. All right. Um, I think Demko is one of the last true workhorses here in, in the NHL, right? Because at your point earlier, Tyler, you were talking about, um, Skinner getting tired, you know, going into the, into the playoffs. And I think that's absolutely correct. And I think that coaches are much more mindful of that now, and they're trying to keep their guys fresh going in there. So that said, yeah, I think talk, going to ride Demko till the wheels fall off, uh, you know, as per usual. And then the Canucks will miss the playoffs, but, um, <laughs> you know, he's going to be much better. I totally uh, agree with that, but honestly, this is a zero G, uh, you know, horror story right here. And that's, this is one of the reasons this guy, Markstrom, um, even guys like Vasilevsky and Shesterkin, they, they didn't come close to, to their draft value or their draft position, right? They didn't even come close to that value. And meanwhile, you got guys like Gustafson, Vanacek, um, you know, Skinner, lo- like goalies like that, that you can get well after the 10th round, even like Omar, what the hell was this man eating during the season? Um, you know, so it, it's like, I, I'm I'm not like fool me once, shame on shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. And and I'm unless Demko falls to the tenth round, buddy, you know, someone else can enjoy him, but I do think definitely a bounce back. It again, he has to, right? 
And I, I think the Canucks are going to be a lot better this season. And I am a homer, right? I like the Canucks, but they're, they're going to be a lot better. Talkit is in here as the head coach and he's, he's much more organized than Bruce Boudreaux was like he he's, you know, it Boudreaux was basically doing a read based system where it's like, okay, just do what you think is the right thing to do. Right. And the players are like, you know, that's, that's why there's so many memes of like four Canucks players on one guy behind the net. It's like, <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing? You know, like talk, it's in here. Like, you know, they're practicing plays X's and O's like, you need to know where your teammates going to be. Right. And that's, that's the big difference. Their structure. So they're going to be better defensively. I don't know. Hopefully they make the playoffs. Demko is a stud, but I'm not drafting. Him. All right. Uh, I wanted to mention too, from February 27th to the end of the season, Demko had a better five on five save percentage um, than UC Soros, Ilya Samsonov, Alexander Gorgiev and Connor Hellebuck uh, at nine thirty five on five. The same as Ilya Sorokin. Beautiful. Beautiful. Come on. Do it again, my man. There you go. Um, and then I wanted to ask you, too, quickly while we're talking about the Canucks. We were talking about Anthony Beauvillier. Do you see a, a breakout season for him next year? Do, like, Does he get time on that top line with uh, Horvat and Pedersen? Um, not, uh, so it'll be, it'll be Kuzmenko and Pedersen. But, yeah, I think that's what Kuz- you meant. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Horvat, yeah. Yeah, he's dead to me. All right? We don't talk about that man now. He's talking <laughs> yang on the Canucks, and I'm not here for it. All right? But um, Beauvillier... I mean, he's still a young guy, so I like that. And he he's going to get opportunity in the top six, but I'm just not convinced. Like again, shot generation, like it, there's nothing there. He's 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 a low sh- shot generation guy, and he he's not a high converter either. So you're not shooting and you're not converting, buddy. Like what the hell are you doing out there? Um, that said, <laughs> I, it's a it's a good compliment. He's more of a middle six guy to me. Um, I don't know what's what's a breakout for you for uh, for Bavillier? Like he got 40 points last year. What what do you consider a breakout? Oh, I think we had him closer to 55 points. Yeah, I could see 55 points for Bavillier. I think that's reasonable, like, because the Canucks are going to be better and th- their defense is going to be much better, right? And they're going to be turning the puck over and, you know, going north-south a lot better than they did last season. And Bavillier is a good skater, and Pedersen is elite. So if he gets access to Pedersen, and any time, e- even second power play here in Vancouver is not terrible. That's one thing that we we actually do okay. Um, you know, <laughs> so I think... If, he, he could 55 points, I think, sounds reasonable for Bavillier, but uh, some things are going to have to go right. All right. Uh, just a couple more players here I wanted to mention as potential bounce backs for next year. Austin Matthews, Connor Brown, Tanner Janot, Tom Wilson, Ryan Johansson, Philip Forsberg, Billy Husso, and Elvis, Elvis Merzlikens. Do any of those players interest you, Blake, at all for next year? Oh, yeah. Austin Matthews. Yes, please. Like I, I'm very <laughs> interested in where Austin Matthews goes coming up into the season here because I actually took him second overall in three leagues because I was like, I was stoked. I mean, I value players based on shots and goal per 60, scoring chances four per 60 and Corsi four. And this guy's elite in all those categories. Elite. Um, what wasn't elite about Austin Matthews last season is his shooting percentage. You know, like if you look at his last four seasons prior to this one, we're looking at you know, 14.7%, 16.2, 18.5 and 17.2. And then a stinky 12.2 last season, you know, but he was in the upper echelon, like if not, you know, second or first, I think he was first in scoring chances for. So that's not going to change. He gets a crap ton of ice time. That's not going to change. So I I think he was just snake bit. He was, he was probably battling. I think he had a wrist thing there. Um, You know, on ice shooting percentage was, was reasonable. Like there's not going to, going to be any weird regressions there i think he's just going to convert a little bit more personally and um, i think he's good for 60 goals next season so i'm interested to see where he goes in drafts because if you can get austin matthews even at five or later later than five oh man that is a slam dunk and i'm here for it so austin matthews big time love it bruce what do you think any any other players there catch your attention uh, probably <clears throat> for later on, be Tom Wilson and Billy Huso as well. I like it. Tyler, anything? Uh, I think like Austin Matthews, obviously the easy answer there. Uh, mine too. Uh, Ryan Johansson would be the other one. Um, I don't like him at all as a player. <laughs> Let's get that out there. But I think at 50% retained, on a good team in a slot that fits him as a second line center with no pressure um, and a fresh start. 
I don't know what he's going to do next year, but I think it's going to be better than what he was doing. And he's in a really good spot to produce there, given that they need that second line center to actually do that too. Yeah. Ryan Johansson's probably the guy. What What do you guys think? Do you think jo, uh, Johansson's a lock on that second line? Because uh, I'm not... I think he probably has the edge, but I'm looking at Ross Colton as a guy that I'm very excited about going into the season because of the advanced metrics and what he, what he's been able to do with limited ice time and his ice time is going to go way up. I think last season he was something like 12 minutes time on ice average. That's going to go up to at least 16 and he's going to get probably power play two and maybe he gets second line. Like, what do you guys think? I still think like, I think he slots in really well in the third line. Um, and I think that makes him a lot deeper. I think that's what they want, given how the season went from last year, kind of struggling to find that second line center with New Hook, not really producing anything. So I think it's it fits that it's going to go like that. I think if anything happens, he definitely fits in the spot to move up a little bit. But I still think Johansson has the obvious edge there, to at least to start the year. Yeah, I would agree with that too, Tyler. And I, I think Colton's just going to take advantage of some some easier matchups on that third line. Um, but I wouldn't be a lot so- of money. It's a lot of money though. Yeah. yeah. Four, was I, it four I, times I would, four or was it, was that what it was? Uh, it was four times something. I don't know if it's three or four, but that's a lot. It's a lot for a guy that, I mean, he's, he's played well, but he's played well given where he was playing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him move up a little bit throughout the season, depending on how things go. I, I think there's some validity to that Blake that, Johansson could drop down to the third and Colton onto the second if things change, right? Like if it's performance based, I could see it. Well, keep, keep it in mind too. If, if Rigel goes down and Colton's has to be the guy, it's blast off time. This guy's yeah. going to crush and <laughs> he bangs the hell out of people. He had like 188 hits last season. He's never gotten over 12 minutes time on ice average. He's going to crush that yep. this year. So that's a player I'm excited about. Colton, he has my well, sleeper. That's going to be a big sleeper for us over at Apple Geno's. No question. That reminds me of Daniel Sprong a little bit, just the fact yeah, that he played another good one. zero time on ice. <laughs> and the guy, I think shot production is good too, no? Yeah. 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 Daniel Sprong's another great one. Um, and then just these other guys here, I'm I like I said, I'm excited about Elvis Mers Leakins for next year. I think there's some some bounce back potential there. And then Tanner Janot. I, I think there's a top six spot up for grabs in Tampa, honestly. I, they, I, I value they pretty Tanner much have more. to, don't they? <laughs> like Well, what? it's Connor Sheary, I think, was the other option on the right side. And so Tanner's know how good is he in his rookie season, right? It's fantastic. There's no reason he can't get back there playing in Tampa. It's they gave up so much to get him, and now they just signed him. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. You, it, like if you're going to give up that much, you've got to play the guy. Um, so I think they have to play him, right? Otherwise, what what the hell did they do? They gave up a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, like for Tanner Janelle. <laughs> Why? What, what you you know? There's other guys that hits. Go pick up Luke Shen. I was just gonna say it's the same thing. Like they gave up 25 draft picks for him. You have to. You have to make. He it has work. to do something for you for in sure. the top six. He's gonna get a look. Yeah. Okay, boys. Um, that was that was great, Blake. Thanks so much for for joining us. That was an interesting episode. Technical difficulties aside, um, internet connections, <laughs> mics turned around, all that good stuff. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I appreciate all the insight, Blake, an absolute beauty when it comes to fantasy. Uh, let our listeners know where can they find you on social media? Um, and of course over at, uh, apples and Geno's fantasy hockey, but where else can they find you? You bet, buddy. Well, first off, thanks, boys, for having me. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Internet connection, that's such a first world problem, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> oh, my internet's so slow. But damn, it sucks. It sucks ass, but that's fine. Uh, we did it. We carried on and we're professionals, right? Um, you so thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. And uh, definitely really appreciate your guys' podcast as well. So I'll say that. Um, you can find me over, um, for, first off, my Twitter is at Blake Creamer AG. Definitely check out at Apples Genos as well. Um, and yeah, my podcast is called Cream of the Crop, an Apples and Genos presentation. So get your biscuits over there, check it out. But uh, yeah, I, I love what you guys are doing over here. And thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot, Blake. Blake really appreciate your time. Um, for us, if you want to find us on Twitter, at FH Hacks, on Instagram, Fantasy Hockey Hacks, check out the website, fantasyhockeyhacks.com. We're going to have the top 10 bounce back candidates there and a lot more details on each of those players. Um, 
boys, I'm going to be honest. I don't remember where we're going next week. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to drop this here. We got uh, our golfing. Pers- no, well, for Tyler probably. Yes, you'll be golfing. But Tyler will be golfing. Joining us on this podcast next week will be Matt Larkin, managing editor and senior writer at Daily Faceoff and co-host of the Puck Pooley's podcast. I believe formerly of the Hockey News as well. So I'm really excited to bring Matt Larkin on next week uh, to help us do the Pacific Division breakdown. We're going to cover Anaheim, LA, San Jose, and the Van- uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. So be sure to join us for there. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you want to leave us a five-star review, it's always appreciated and helps us rank in the podcast directories. Uh, Bruce, Tyler, Blake, thanks, boys. We'll see you next week. Good night. Bye-bye. See you next week. Take care.